Welcome to Gerald's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. Welcome to Gerald's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. Welcome to Gerald's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. Welcome to Gerald's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. You're our host. Go! Hey everyone, welcome back. We're diving into something today that's got people talking, like really talking. Audio plugins. Definitely a hot topic, though this time it's less about the usual suspects and more about, well. A free plugin causing a right ruckus online. Air Windows 2 Tape 7. Ah, uh, yeah, that one's got a bit of a buzz about it. To say the least, it's got people up in arms over, of all things, presets. Or the lack thereof. You see this a lot with creative tools, that push and pull between wanting a quick fix versus really getting your hands dirty. And in this corner, representing the, where are my presets? Camp dot, we've got CRX979 from the Gearspace forum saying, it's 2024, give me a button. Huh. I can practically hear the exasperation. But on the flip side, you've got folks like App and Exum arguing this missing the entire point of what this thing tries to do, tape emulation. So is it just me? Or is this about more than just clicking a button? It's like this plugin's questioning the whole easy bake approach to music production. Exactly. This isn't your Instagram filter tape saturation, right? This is Chris, the developer, saying, hey, tape's complex. Interact with it. So instead of instant vintage warmth, you're getting a physics lesson in magnetism. Pretty much. But in a good way. It's about emulating the real deal, not just slapping on a facsimile. It's that subtle stuff how the tape responds differently to different sounds. Sounds like someone's been hitting the audio textbooks. Guilty as charged. But think about it, that's what gives those classic recordings their character. All right, I'm intrigued, but break it down for us. How does this Toe Tape 7 actually work? What makes it tick? Well, for one, there's this thing called Dubly. Dubly. Sounds like something you'd order at a trendy coffee shop. Ah, huh, right. But seriously, it's an algorithm Chris created, and it's wild. Basically, it messes with the frequencies in a way that makes your audio, especially after the tape saturation, sound massive. Massive, like a wall of sound. Exactly. Adds this depth and presence, very reminiscent of those old recordings we love. Okay, so that's one knob. But I've heard this plugin has more controls than a spaceship cockpit. What else is going on here? So doubly is just the tip of the iceberg, huh? What else we got? Oh, we're just getting started. Think bias and head bump, each one tweaking those subtle nuances of tape behavior. Sounds like we need a degree in electrical engineering just to use this thing. Speaking of which, some users have mentioned this whole aliasing thing, particularly at lower sample rates. Right, aliasing. That's where things get a bit technical. <laughs> it's like pushing a tape machine too hard, you know? Get that lovely saturation, but sometime. You end up with some unwanted fuzziness like a bad cassette tape left out in the sun. Exactly, a bit of digital distortion. It's the price you pay for pushing those digital boundaries. But don't worry, there are workarounds. Hit me with them. Oversampling, uh. your best friend. Imagine it like this. You're essentially giving those audio waves more room to breathe, less digital traffic jam. Okay, so more breathing room for the audio, got it. Mm. Makes sense. But isn't this where those presets would come in handy? I mean, couldn't Chris have just, you know, steered us clear of these technical potholes? That's the million dollar question, right? Oh. And the answer, well, it all comes back to Chris's philosophy. Remember, this isn't about instant gratification. It's about understanding the tools, the process. So less paint by numbers, more freestyle sonic art. Exactly, although he did mention on the forum that setting all the knobs at 0.5 is a good starting point. Think of it like a blank canvas ready for your sonic masterpiece. Okay, so maybe not a totally blank canvas, more like a canvas with a really cool texture already on it. Perfect analogy. But speaking of masterpieces, let's talk about how this thing actually sounds, because at the end of the day, that's what matters, right? Absolutely. So hit us with it. How's 2 Tape 7 shaping those sounds? It's interesting. Users are raving about its effect on drums and cymbals. Really? Details, please. Give us the sonic rundown. Imagine this. You've got a snare drum, right? And that initial hit, that transient, it's what gives it that punch. To tape 7, it seems to enhance that snap, makes it pop without squashing it. You get this warmth and punch all at once. Drums just come alive. Okay, I'm getting excited now. And what about those cymbals? They can be tricky, right? Especially in the digital world. Yeah, absolutely. But this plugin, it adds this shimmer, this air to the cymbals, makes them sound like they're reverberating in this perfectly treated room. It's all about the harmonics. This is where that bias knob comes in, right? Yeah. The one we glossed over earlier. You got it. 
bias. It's like fine tuning the tape's sensitivity. Subtle, but it can completely change the character of your sound. Sounds like one of those happy accidents waiting to happen. Totally. And here's the kicker. Ruggins on the forum said it best. The bias control on this thing is insane. I'm hearing sounds I've literally never heard before, and I've been using tape emulation for years. Now that's high praise. It's like Chris discovered some secret sonic spice and decided to share it with the world for free. It's true, and that's the most remarkable thing about this whole story. He's basically dropping a knowledge bomb on the industry, right. proving you don't need to break the bank for great sound. And that's huge, because it challenges the whole status quo. Makes you wonder, what else is out there just waiting to be discovered? It's kind of mind-blowing, right? This whole thing started with a simple question. Where are my presets? And suddenly, we're questioning the very fabric of digital audio creation. It really makes you think, in this age of instant everything, are we losing touch with the, I don't know, the craft of it all, the joy of experimentation? Totally. It's the difference between like following a recipe to the letter and just going wild in the kitchen, seeing what happens. You might end up with a disaster or you might invent the next cronut. And to take seven, it's giving you those ingredients, those tools and saying, go on, surprise yourself. What's amazing is that Chris could have easily kept this tech under wraps, slapped a premium price tag on it, but nope, he's like, here. Take it. It's yours. Speaks volumes about his philosophy, doesn't it? It's not about gatekeeping sound. It's about empowering artists, no matter their budget. Ah. Which begs the question, what other sonic treasures are hiding in plain sight? Now you've got me wondering. All right. So, bottom line time. Should our listeners dive into the world of Tape 7? Absolutely. Take the plunge, download it, it's free, what have you got to lose? Exactly. Get those creative juices flowing. And hey, maybe the best sounds are the ones you discover when you get a little lost along the way. Couldn't agree more. And hey, who knows what sonic surprises await in Tape 8? Because Chris, he's already on to the next big thing. It's an exciting time to be making music, that's for sure. For sure. Well, that's all the time we have for today's Deep Dive. Until next time, keep those ears tuned and those minds open. Welcome to Jell's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. Welcome to Jell's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. Welcome to Jell's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed. Welcome to Jell's Deep Dive, the podcast you didn't know you needed.